गणपति भजे हम श्री महागणपति All India Open University Vice Chancellors meet on qualitative reforms in regulatory framework to promote ODL and ODL education in the wake of pandemic and NEP 2020. And on behalf of Karnataka State Open University, it's my proud privilege to welcome each one of you. Respected Dr. C. N. Ashwat Nara and Sir, thank you very much for the Honorable Minister. Your presence here is of much value to us. We know that you are packed with a tight schedule. Nevertheless, you made your way through here and it is of great inspiration to us. We thank you, sir, for your tremendous contribution and continued support to us. I think that he is a us today for this all-important meeting. I welcome you, sir. And now I request our brother, uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor to welcome him with a flower bouquet. And stands can be sensed in every administrative and academic activities of KSOU. Now I request our uh, Professor Ashwak Kamble, Dean Academic KSOU, to welcome him with a flower bouquet. I would like to specially welcome Professor R. Rajanna, Registrar Karnataka State. I'm so glad that this day we are joined by Science Officer Dr. Kadar Pasha, our OST to Vice Chancellor Professor Devraj, Executive Engineer Sri Baskar. I also thank all of them for their untiring support in organizing this event. I also welcome all other statutory officers of KSOU who are present here, teaching and non teaching. You know, distance education enrollment constitutes about 11.1% of the total enrollment in higher education, out of which 45.5% are female students. In our country, we have one central open university, 16 open universities, one state private open university, there are 110 dual mode universities, which offer education through distance access to formal education for one or the other reason, learners who find it difficult to attend college on an everyday basis, working class and other... As all, in the all India Open University Vice Chancellor meet has been inaugurated today on qualitative reforms in regulatory framework to promote ODL and OL education in the wake of pandemic and NEP 2020. On this day, I would like to acknowledge the presence of our Joint Secretary, Dr. Avichel Kapoorji, Joint Secretary, UGC Distance Education Bureau, New Delhi, and as well as our Vice Chancellor, Dr. Vidya Shankar of Karnataka State Open University, who has been consistently leading from front and taken up a lot of challenges during his stint lot of good things has happened in the Karnataka State University, State Open University. And I recognize his presence as well as the Registrar of the Karnataka State Open University, Mr. Dr. Rajana, and as well as our Vice Chancellors from different universities across country from Tamil Nadu, Assam, Gujarat and many more universities. We acknowledge all of your presence and appreciate you took all your time to come and participate physically, physically coming and participating 
also is really appreciable and all the vice chancellors will come on the virtual conference also dear friends since all of us know education since in the backdrop of particularly the 21st century is a knowledge based economy so we need to provide education not just education quality education education now doesn't matter much unless it is not a quality education unless it is relevant unless it is to cater to the present time demands of the market we need to understand and make the people employable industry ready and as well as ensure they will be job creators the kind of quality in a person what we are expecting the holistic education to be provided to each and every person just for the name sake as we have been given the responsibility knowingly unknowingly we are in the helm of affairs we need to understand where we are what we are supposed to deliver we can't afford to even neglect a minute not even a single decision should go wrong it should be above our self interest it's a call of the duty and since we are in the situation where it is completely entire country since been globalized we need to compete we can't tell we are separate from others we can't compare with the worst and be the best we need to the, be the best among the best so that should be the ultimate motto nothing can stop us today's technology can enable us we can enable not we don't require years and decades or centuries to improve our quality of education it's merely a commitment commitment and dedication to build this country and offering ourselves to the empowerment of the youth thereby doing this we can ensure of our honorable prime minister vision from the amrit mahotsav on the 75 years of celebration when we are going to celebrate the centenary we need to be the number one in the world in all the terms in all the sectors the kind of population what we have we have got no other option to provide the equity or the inclusiveness all these years we have been talking about only exclusiveness and equality if equality has to be seen or inclusion to be seen education is the only quality education there is the only only way and skill complete integration and the personality and we need to have a citizen who is committed for the welfare of the country and the society not working for himself self living doesn't mean anything unless he doesn't have ethics morals we have to highly qualified people without ethics and morals unless we don't have ethics and morals we can't do much difference as well as dead is more dangerous educated without ethics is much more dangerous than an uneducated person that is the what we have seen so far so dear friends since all of us have been given lot of respect opportunity time and again we need to work in this direction and nep is giving us all the opportunity earlier we used to live with lot of restriction 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 obstacles obstacle trust deficit trust deficit nobody is willing to trust and we are not willing to give them freedom we they always talk in negative what worse can happen than this situation nothing worse can happen better to give freedom allow things to happen monitor market dynamics accreditations not only just government accreditation even the industry accreditation is very important we are most of the time abusing our powers we need to get out from the abusing of powers we need to be pro people pro system what is relevant today we need to engage and we need to ensure that our economy to grow economy education is the one and only only way that will take us to the next level to expand the market and to cater to everybody and we are talking about quality we are talking about affordability we are talking about equity and we are talking about accountability so with all these things 
education, national education policy, seeing the policy itself is very forward looking and it will ensure that the decentralization happens to the maximum, no interference from the government, government interference will be totally taken away and running system centralized, it cannot run. It cannot run with a centralized mechanism. We need to decentralize, we need to empower the institution, we need to make them accountable and each and every person of the society has to see his future through institutionally. He can't see his future through his assets of his father or mother or parents or family. They cannot see the future. Future can be seen only through the institution. We need to make all and all possible stakeholders to be part of the education system. Just because his children are studying in that institution doesn't mean he doesn't, he doesn't need to connect with the institution. They live elsewhere, they study elsewhere. That should not happen. The place where they live only, in, they should ensure they get the education. Because of the quality, because of lack of system, they go elsewhere. Some other state, some other institution, some other district, which should not happen. So we need to make them pride, commit for the development of their institution in their respect to geography. That is very, very important. So Government of India, UGC, has been leading from the front. They've come out within a fantastic framework which we need to utilize, which we need to make use of it to take it forward. And as well as all of your target gross enrollment ratio from present 28%, 26 27%, to reach to 50% by 2035 is a very good uh, uh, mandate or the vision what has been, uh, has been in enshrined which we need to achieve. Not uh, declaration to declaration, it should not happen from declaration to declaration and from, if this has to happen, it cannot happen through the regular institution. It can happen only through the open universities. Nowhere else it can be achieved. If GR of 50% has to be achieved, Joint Secretary Sir, it can be achieved only through the ODL only, sir. ODL and the online learning, sir. So we have come out with a lot of thoughts and concepts and policies. We really appreciate, sir. And uh, we'll be willing to take it forward and make it affordable. Already we have been working in the state of Karnataka, sir. We have collaborated with many of the institutions to provide the digital education, add-on programs, employability, future skills. All these things we are providing free of cost, sir, and learning management, complete digital learning. We have got into complete digital learning. Our government institution much ahead of the private institution, better than private university, better than deep university, sir. With a small cost, we are able to do all these things. We have made now all our smart classrooms, smart classrooms, all our learning system is through learning management system. Whatever formative assessment has been prescribed, sir, we are in a position to now go for the formative assessment instead of a summative assessment. That is the kind of change we are bringing. We are collaborating with the industry. We are working with the demand and supply. What, do you, what is the opportunity there for them is being known on the tip of their fingers, sir. We are trying to collaborate all the departments, bring it closer. The convergence is happening in a very big way. The small intervention can bring big results. Not necessarily, we are not spent even a rupee here. It's only a commitment to ensure that our youth of the state get a better future. They should never be helpless. They never should be helpless. They should be always confident. That is the kind of opportunity they need to get uh, with these few words. And uh, time and again, UGC has been uh, working very well and open universities have been working well. And in the state of Karnataka, we have made only uh, Karnataka State Open University as an exclusive university to provide open and distance learning, which was endorsed. We appreciate the stand of the UGC, which en endorsed our stand. That is also important because their endorsement also makes a big difference. If they wouldn't have endorsed, we would have been also in a different path. So I thank on behalf of our government uh, for the kind of endorsement and the support being extended. We'll ensure the ethics, morals, transparency, accountability, and the university will never be the dens of corruptions. We want it to be a very transparent system with all the matters. 
so that the confidence because the trust is so important trust just definitely leads to many problems we are not willing to trust anybody because everybody tends to take advantage of that sir i can assure you this and with regard to the sir uh, covid 19 many of our universities were not able to comply with the nac uh, conditions i think i request some kind of relaxation because some of the universities are starting newly new universities have been uh, been established for them to get into accreditation system they require 5 years time all this limitations are there sir even for that i think you have given many of the relaxation in the present online policy you have provided that relaxation for the universities similarly we expect since we are trying to establish more, more and more universities we are trying to make each and every institution as per the nep as an university unitary universities and district wise universities we, we have built a very good platform so digital platform earlier to manage a university it used to require 500 people 300 people now with only 20 people including vice chancellor and register only 20 people good enough sir it will be better than the conventional university it will be 100 times a better services the feel good sir uh, we have come out with an, an ad also we are number one and with regard to the dg locker online verification for the genuinity of the certificate accessibility retrieval everything has been done sir completely in the state of karnataka he samati we are simplified now there is no question of paying money for the mass cards or for any certificates there is no money and digital evaluation also we are provided from the state government sir we don't want anybody private players to be in providing all services we are now providing free of cost all technology platform 10 modules we have developed for the all the administration and administration will go on on real time sir real time and the dashboards are ready to assess each and every student and institution services administration hr salary academics all possible aspects have been covered and we have provided to all the universities now we want to show how the cost can be cut down in each and every university sir for a small cost we want the institutions to run so with these few words i just wanted to share the good practices of the state of karnataka we are working towards and we are extremely happy uh, to ensure that the implementation of the national education policy happens very effectively and thank you once again sir for all of your uh, kind support and participation let me not take much of your time let me end my talk here itself and uh, wish you all the best with regard to the the conclave at the meet of the vice chancellors go successfully and many proposal good discussion let it happen the deliberation let it happen and come out with a fantastic uh, reforms in the regulatory framework in the to promote odl and well thank you namaskar jain thank you very much honorable minister sir for your very insightful and inspiring speech Now I invite uh, Dr. Abhichal Kapoor, Joint Secretary UGC Deb, for his uh, remarks. Honorable Minister for Higher Education, Government of Karnataka, respected and honorable Dr. C N Ashwath Narayana sir, my dear friend, honorable Vice Chancellor, Karnataka State Open University Professor S Vidya Shankar ji. registrar of the university professor rajan r and all the distinguished honorable vice chancellors and the members of ksu community present here a very good morning to each one of you it is a matter of great pride and privilege for me to be part of today's one day meet uh, which is vice chancellors of open university meet on qualitative reforms and regulatory framework to promote odl and online education in view of two important things which has happened which have happened in last two years is the pandemic covid pandemic and the nep 2020 at the outset also i'd like to thank professor asvidya shankar ji for accepting during deliberation this came a thought that uh, so many things are happening in the higher edu- education landscape particularly in the online and odl space let's have a look at the leaders of such universities and find a way out in terms of uh, sustainability and also in terms of improving the quality of odl and online education before i share my thoughts uh, i would also like to thank the honorable minister sir for sharing the best practices uh, government of karnataka 
and the vision of government of Karnataka for becoming a quality benchmark state in the country for offering ODL online in higher education space. Thank you, sir. As we all are aware that COVID-19 impacted not only India but the global community in a big way. Today, social distancing is the new norm which we call as new normal. Lot of reforms by Ministry of Education, University Grants Commission and the universities in the country have taken only from the perspective of reducing the impact of this dis disruption on the education segment with the use of technology. The only positive positivity, only one minister sir I see from the pandemic rest all are negative is the change in our mindset. Mindset of accepting that technology, a creditable quality education can also be delivered by using making use of technology. Otherwise, it would have been taken uh, for us 10 years down the line to understand the use of technology tools in providing the same quality education as it is perceived in the conventional mode of education. And in spite of COVID came suddenly, first wave, second wave, the education entity in the form of government, university, states, all ecosystem put together, lot of things have been reformed and innovated in ensuring that learners get, they are constructively engaged and also the education continuity remain consistent across the country, across the universities. The second thing which has happened and which is covered in today's theme is the NEP 2020. If you look at the NEP 2020 announced by the government on 29th July 2020, the on, it is built on five pillars. The pillars of access, equity, quality, affordability and accountability. It has laid down a framework for bringing transformational reforms in, at school level and at higher education level across the country. It has also aimed, as told by Honorable Minister Sir, a gross enrollment ratio of 50% by 2035. It has also looked at providing flexibility to the learner so that learner can learn the best of the contents from best of the teachers at, it, at his own learning capability, at his own learning place and at the learning time which is convenient to the learner. It has resulted in multi-entry, multi-exit and lot of reforms which you may have seen from the government of India during pandemic as well as NEP implementation process which is being put into place. If you look at some of the reforms because they are important in today's deliberation also that we came out with academic bank of credit where it's like a bank for a student to have credits. I don't know how many of open universities have used that credit. Now I can have 50%, I can have now many universities, dual mode universities particularly have joined ABC registration and the sharing of credits. So this is like I can have like a bank account, I can have a credit account and I keep on accumulating by doing courses of n number of university and my credits gets accumulated in the ABC and the university from which I need a certificate at any, at any level, diploma, degree, UG, PG, I need to have 50% of credit from that university and remaining 50% can be as accumulated over a period of time. So a learner will have a lot of options when you look at uh, NEP implementation some of the details I, I'll also share slightly later on. But if you look at the NEP implementation and the way UGC and the Ministry of Education has looked at, look at some of the reforms which, which have been annou announced over a period of last uh, year or so, is not only Academic Bank of Credit, but number of courses which are available on SWAM platform, which is the Government of India's learning platform, study web. All those courses have been mapped in terms of credit transfer to UGPG programs. Look at our own ODL and online regulations, ODL of 17 and online of 2018. Both have been merged and superseded by an integrated regulation of 2020. What it has brought is the changes looking into permissible online component. Earlier online component in conventional and ODL mode, Honorable Sir, was only 20%. Now it is permitted to have 40% component full-fledged online mode in conventional education also and open and distance learning landscape also. Earlier, the computer-based testing was not permitted in ODL mode. Now it is permitted computer-based testing uh, examination in the ODL mode within the territory. 
Now, if you look at some of these reforms, and uh, of course with credit transfer it will continue, the idea is to provide more and more flexibility and autonomy to the higher education institutions and less of a regulatory re re regime, as Honorable Ministers have also said, that university needs to own what they are doing. And we looked at that perspective, sir. Uh, Atmanirbhar Bharat announcement uh, by the government that 100 universities will be automatically permitted to offer full-fledged online degree courses. We integrated that in our 2020 regulation where we said that we, because you have to have an eligible category and then you have to have an entitled category in order to move to a higher benchmark university. So if I have a higher benchmark university, then I can start 13 courses, three undergraduate courses, 10 postgraduate courses without UGC permission but in compliance to the provision of regulations. And look at how the landscape has changed in two years. 2020, UGC accorded recognition to seven universities for 37 programs. And as we are talking, now the number of universities have moved from seven to 59, and number of programs have moved from 37 to 351. Almost nine times change, a jump, in the number of institutions, and as well as number of the programs. But what is there for us to look at? When you look at online space, out these 59 universities, we have four central universities, we have one seven, 17 state universities, then we have seven private universities, we have 31 deemed to be universities, but we do not have a state open university even today when we are talking about in terms of either recognized to offer online programs or entitled to offer online programs. This is something we need to look at when we will be deliberating in the afternoon. Also important thing, Honorable Sir, that we haven't kept a upper limit on the number of students enrollment because it's a technology-centric technology education. So there is no limit on number of learners. So practically, whole country can enroll in these 351 programs because there is no territorial jurisdiction for online programs. They can enroll international students also. This semester, I'm happy to share, we have close to 50,000 international online students from across the country. Some of them have come through Ministry of External Affairs under the bilateral treaty which government has signed in recent years, for which fee is also paid by Ministry of External Affairs. So if you look at this, there is no territorial jurisdiction. There is no number of seats which you can, uh, which you can admit in these online programs, whereas you have TJ and ODL. I am also looking at how this will shape up because if I see the education per se competitiveness, today when we are talking, this on one side this is an era of globalization, on other side it is ever increasing institutional competitiveness because it's an open market and as a customer when we purchase anything going into mall, we look at the best product at the affordable price. When you look at these components, same thing I am seeing happening in the higher education landscape. When you have a conventional mode of education, when you have an ODL mode of education, when you have an online mode of education. Now, when I look at institutional competitiveness, I can foresee with my li limited experience in the, this ODL and online space that survival of fittest is going to be the norm, fittest and best is going to be the norms and times to come because sustainability is very important. Look at the current budget announcement. We are working on that. Government announced setting up of a digital university. It's a full-fledged digital uh, university which will be operating in hub and spoke model where you have a virtual university, digital university with very few uh, resources needed and infrastructure is minimal as also shared by uh, Honorable Minister but it spokes across the country in terms of packaging those programs. So there is going to be a digital university. It's a full-fledged online university, offering programs at various levels expected to operate from July this year. Then look at the second announcement, where government said, all this is in public domain, what I'm sharing with you, is that top class foreign universities will be permitted to set up or operate from GIFT, I remember GIFT is the Gujarat International Finance Tech City. So they have created like our special educa education zone. There, this is a, this zone which they have created in I think Gandhinagar. And I think to start with five will come into place. 
they will be regulation free because they are top of the top in the world. So when foreign university will operate, when you have an online space where there is no territory, there is no intake limitation. So how competitive is going to be this market? And if I personally see, I see this as blended mode, which is which will be the mode of education as we move forward. Some part of conventional, large part of technology. As I said that officially conventional is 60% now. 40% I can use full-fledged online. So I need learner only for 60% in the classroom. So it's already a blended. Going forward, you will have a more and more blended with more and more technology-centric approach. Lot of reforms, sir, we have also taken at UGCN in order to bring lot of credibility. And these, whatever reforms we have take, done, we have done with the help of the vice chancellor sitting here. Uh, vice chancellor B.R. Ambedkar Open University from Hyderabad sir, sits on our working group uh, where he has suggested a lot of reforms. So anything which we do sitting at Delhi, we do with the help of vice chancellors only. All expert committee reports, all decisions, all communications in public domain, no decision UGC or ministry take without them having consulted over a uh, e-platform. All our uh, we, uh, meetings are video recorded and preserved. All our reports of decision, whether yes or no, are shared with the institutions. Some of the concerns on one side, any approval which we accord, sir, we accord for five years. Gone are the days of one year, two year. Any recognition, recognition for five years. So don't come to us for five years, as long as you don't want to have new programs. So a lot of uh, simplification in the regulatory regime we have done. I think when we are looking at sessions today, we need to look at some of the things, the perceived image about ODL education in the society. We do perceive this image, and if we do not accept, we will never improve. We need to accept that there is a perceived impression that this is an inferior mode of education as compared to conventional mode of education. I am not saying, I am for it. We, we have written number of letters to all employers, government, public sectors. Still, you keep on getting the message where people look at in mindset that conventional versus ODL versus online. So this is a concern which we need to look at. Teacher related violations which keeps coming from time to time is something we need to look at. I personally hope and believe sir, today's technical sessions uh, will uh, provide two, three things to us. The one is how to change this perceived impression. Second is how to go about reforms where because if, 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 if a student, if you look at from the student perspective, why should he look at uh, territorial jurisdiction? If a best university of India is offering an online course in management discipline, sitting at any place in the country, if I can take, why will I take from a university which is nearby? So how, how to make it sustainable mode of uh, reforms? And third is the how to make stakeholders, in this case, primarily the universities themselves, accountable for what they are doing. If we look at these three components, I think it will help in a big way I think at the end, collectively, I'll request each one present here because you are the leaders in your own territory. Let's create an ecosystem, ecosystem for providing quality ODL and online education, which should serve three purposes. The first purpose is to provide best possible learning experience to the learner. He doesn't feel that he's learning through a different medium or all mediums are same. So so ecosystem should provide the best possible learning experience to the learner. Second, it should contribute in some manner to the nation growth. And the third is, as recommended in the new education policy 2020, to promote India as a global education destination, providing premium education at affordable cost. I think if we can serve these three things in totality, I think ODL and online space will serve and lead the education space of this country. And if this is going to happen, I have no hesitation in saying, as Honorable Minister Sir has also said, that open universities need to lead these reforms. They need to set the benchmark. As I keep on saying when I meet the Honorable VCs often in my room, that if a university wants to start an ODL program, do we have a model where they can say that, look at this open university, look at this program, they have set the benchmark. No, I don't think we have that kind of uh, system even today when we are talking. So, because our model is inverted, sir. In ODL, 
we get from 17 onward, onwards every year we are getting around 17 to 18 lakh learner so numbers are increasing and 100 plus universities are offering odl 60 to 70 percent i think 65 70 percent enrollment in odl comes from these 15 open universities that means remaining 85 universities have minimal enrollment so when the enrollments are so huge in these open universities which have significantly become higher because we are promoting more and more government initiatives as compared to private initiative i think if we can set a benchmark so many new open universities are many states are starting kerala has done punjab has done jharkhand has recently done we have received the application where should they look at where should they look at? They need to look at the early, uh, like for example, if a new government set up a new university in engineering discipline, they look at IITs, they look at a pre Indian Institute of Science Bangalore, they look at some of the premier universities in the country. Accordingly, when the online space and ODL space, because it, this is going to be the space in the years to come, we need to set benchmarks when we look at the reforms. I think if we can conclude by the end of the day, some of the reforms, which are really practic practically implementable, accountable and expected to result in the qualitative improvement in ODL in space. I think we all have done our job for the day. Uh, I wish this meet a grand success. I came all the way to listen to all of you. I can say that uh, being the head of the distance uh, ecosystem, whatever suggestions you will give, uh, I'll take it to the authorities as required to be navigated across the system for its meaningful implementation. With this, once again, thanks to one and all. I would like to end with my favorite quote, Honorable Sir, of uh, Gothe, is that knowing is not enough. If we know, we must apply. Similarly, willing is not enough. We must do. Jai Hind, thank you very much. As a token of respect and appreciation, we would like to felicitate our Honorable Minister for Higher Education, Dr. C. N. Ashwat Narayan, sir, and to present this token of appreciation on behalf of Karnataka State Open University team. It's now my pleasure to invite Professor S. Vidyashankar, Honorable Vice Chancellor. ITBT and skill development government of Karnataka who have just now inaugurated and made his inaugural speech of the qualitative refer all India Open University Vice Chancellor's meet on qualitative reforms in regulatory framework to promote ODL and OL education in the wake of pandemic and NEP 2020 and chief guests of today's function, Dr. Vichal Kapoorji, the Joint Secretary of UGC DEP, and all the Vice Chancellors of Open Universities across the country, and press and media delegates, and my colleagues from Karnataka State Open University, the Minister who is an young and dynamic, who is very, who is taking very keen interest on to make changes in the, or to make reforms in the Karnataka higher education system. Not to appreciate in front of him that I am telling these words, but to say really that 
he has given full freedom to all the vice chancellors to work under the act without any interference from the government this scenario we are seeing as a vice chancellor for the first time that the government interferes in the university autonomous system is very minimal he involves with the activities he advises he guides he sat many number of times with the vice chancellors whenever the vice chancellors invites and he will share his thoughts what an education system should it should be student friendly the education what we offer should give an opportunity to students to go for a job industry ready he has done many reforms even in the skill development itbt his imagination is thoughts are so for a future definitely the karnataka is going to be the pioneer in the bringing the changes in the higher education system as a example the government of karnataka has developed under the under his leadership ucms university college management system wherein there is no need for any particular university to go in for a separate softwares for examination system or admission system there is a single platform through which all the universities can make admission online collect fees online issue of marks card valuation everything through a single platform under ucms system he has implemented not so under his able leadership the universities are now in karnataka with a less expenditure they are doing more and many more reforms are in on pipeline the karnataka is the i think all of you know well that is the pioneer in promoting an nep in the july 21 itself from the july cycle of 2021 and the karnataka state open university is also introducing this nep system uh, from this february itself and with this words what karnataka is doing and my friend and the joint secretary dr avichal kapoor ji in his speech he has elaborated what is a briefly the nep includes or what way the nep advantages of nep and what are the five pillars under which nep is formed and implemented and what are the real challenges to the open university in future many foreign universities are going to play the role establishing the online education system where only the survival of fittest one who is fit will definitely survive and the contribution by the what should be the challenges that open university which we are going to discuss in our one day sir one day deliberations which we are going to i have now with these words i don't want to take much time the reason being we are going to discuss the entire day uh, the what are the challenges that we are going to face and how to face those challenges what are the reforms needed in online and odl education system since avichel kapoor ji has mentioned in his speech that none of the open university in this country are able to go with online education system at the same time on behalf of everyone i request at least to relax nag for one or two years for starting an online education system as we all know that each open university as you have mentioned there was a resource crunch for open universities in every state as i have heard of because 
they always treat the open university degree as the second level degree unfortunately still there are many organizations especially i'll discuss with my minister also that especially even in uh, some uh, diary examination system sir they have mentioned open university vice chancellor uh, sir open university students are not eligible to apply the reasoning they have made it in their c and r that uh, students are not eligible even i have written i wrote a letter to all the diaries uh, that is kms kms yeah so from this day as i request the minister from my side i have already written a letter i have spoken to them the managing director and the president of the diaries though there should not be any such rule otherwise no students will come forward to do the degrees from the open universities there are many such changes are need to be brought that we will discuss in today's deliberation and we'll submit the uh, transactions of the deliberations to the honorable joint secretary who is here as well as to the minister i hope the minister will also forward our deliberations to the ugc chairman and we'll try to bring some changes thank you one and all for having given me an opportunity to say a few words we'll discuss in length once the minister exit thank you thank you a graceful and warm morning to our most respected pro chancellor chief guest honorable vice chancellors members of board of management vice chancellors of various state open universities statutory officers of ksou teaching and non teaching staff press and media person last but not the least all gathered over here it is my privilege for having been asked to propose vote of thanks on this occasion i on behalf of karnataka state open university first of all extend the most sincere thanks to dr c n ashwath narayana sir honorable minister for higher education and pro chancellor of our university on my behalf i extend a very hearty thanks to the chief guest dr avichal kapoor sir joint secretary ugc deb who spared time from his busy schedule to grace this occasion i thank professor s vidya shankar sir honorable vice chancellor of our university for his support to initiate this meet it is my duty to thank our beloved registrar professor r rajana sir for his administrative support to make this event successful i take opportunity to thank the esteemed members of board of management ksou i also extend thanks to all the statutory officers a dean academy dean study center finance officer executive engineer and all the uh, statutory officers of ksou for their administrative support and encouragement uh, events like this cannot happen overnight so as the wheel started rolling weeks ago and required planning and bird eye view for detail here we are fortunate enough to backed up by a team of very dedicated and motivated team of our university who know who knew their task and very much result oriented i especially thank the press and media people who have been helping us in wide publicity of this event i once again want to state that we are grateful to all the delegates of this event we thank you for being with us this time it has been a great pleasure thank you one and all the outset i thank the organizers especially is it all okay uh, at the outset i am very thankful to the organizers especially uh, sriman professor vidya shankar ji 
Vice Chancellor, Karnataka State Open University. And, other, and also his team for extending me this invitation to participate in this uh, very important and historical uh, Vice Chancellor's meet in the appropriate context of changing scenario of higher education system in our country. In the inaugural session, especially our Honorable Education Minister for Higher Education in Science and Technology, Sri Ashwath Narayanji, and also keynote speaker and chief guest of this session, inaugural session, respected Dr. Avichal Kapoorji from UGC, Deb, made us very clear and gave us a clear-cut perspective. And this cut and razor session has given a appropriate direction and set the appropriate tone for the discussions to be held in the uh, ongoing sessions. So I am very thankful to them. The first technical session is on challenges for the ODL education in open universities. As chairman of this session, I would like to say that the after presentation of the main speaker, Honorable Vice Chancellor of KKHSOU Assam, Professor N. N. Sharma Ji, let us have let us spend some brief time for discussion also. Otherwise, the, it will become a one-way traffic. Uh, so, let us have some uh, discussion. Then one more thing I wanted to say. This in the context of implementation of national education policy, new national education policy of 2020, really it is a wonderful education policy. Came out after 34 years in our country after 1986 new education policy, which has great characteristics of transformative nature. And it has a lot of pot potentiality to change the future of the entire education system, both school education and higher education in our country. So that is the direction. But pandemic has become al al almost endemic. It is ended and it is going to be going to end very shortly. Uh, we hope so. So that is the direction of the uh, COVID-19 situation. Let us not bother about it. But finally, our main uh, perspective should be NEP 20. In that perspective only, whatever the reforms we wanted to carry out or whatever the challenges we are facing at this stage need to be viewed and analyzed and we, we should go forward. Dr. Arvichal Kapoor also rightly said, the open university should be the leaders of the present reforms. And exactly that is the right statement in the right perspective. So, uh, when open university system was introduced in our country in 1982, ours is the first open university in India. After AP open university only, D then open university only, IGNO has come, and Professor G. Ram Reddy, former UGC chairman, was founder by chancellor of these both universities. At that time, that was a great reformative initiative in those days. Though it was resisted, heckled, what not, and the education system has created a lot of hurdles also in a way. But even then, now, we have, it has settled down, and it, it has become an acceptable one in the entire uh, 
society as a whole to all these stakeholders also so that is the background but in this context uh no doubt we are facing challenges and the new education policy also suggested a light but tight regulatory framework and the regulatory framework or procedures should be positive and it should provide encouragement to the open universities to come out their problems and challenges that should be the basic approach it should not go in a negative way to control and restrict and all that so that is my point of view and at the same time open universities also should reimagine its earlier system of uh, administration or management whether it is a structure or process flexibility is the most important now unless we are flexible enough in our uh, administrative structure and also academic programs and policies it is very difficult to go forward and at the same time now the blended mode of learning teaching and learning has become the order of the day so we have to think on those lines keeping this broad framework in view our uh, main speaker will analyze the things then briefly we have a discussion and opinions will be expressed by our uh, participants in the session and then will by the right time i think 12:30 the given time to us but within this time we will close the session thank you very much this is this is the brief presidential remarks uh, but I, i will not make any closing remarks so let us give more time for the uh, discussion thank you very much thanks once again i request our honorable vice chancellor professor n sharma ji to make his presentation